click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, we are seeing today something called as PERT, Program Evaluation and Review Technique. Now what exactly is PERT? PERT is more or less similar to something called as CPM or you can call it as a part of the CPM. Now under CPM, we had exact timings or the time of each activity was known with certainty. That's not the case with PERT. Under PERT, we have the time estimates which are probabilistics. Therefore, here there is a degree of uncertainty. Let's see how it can be understood. Now, in the part we discuss the timings on the basis of probability and therefore, we don't have one single time. We have three different time estimates under PERT rather than having one single time for each activity. These are called as optimistic, pessimistic and most likely time. Now, someone who is optimistic will always think positive that the things will happen as they are planned and therefore in those cases it will be like the time will be the minimal time taken to complete that activity. So let us say a project manager has an optimistic estimate of completing a project or completing a particular activity in six days. So six days will be the most optimistic time keeping your positive mind frame. On the contrary, a project manager may be completely pessimistic. He may think negative. He may feel that there might be some obstacles during the process of execution of the project and therefore he may give us a time estimate which may be very high. Let us say a time estimate of 18 days. So optimistic thinks positive, he thinks everything will be done in the shortest possible time of 6 days whereas pessimistic is completely negative and he feels that he will take near about 18 days to complete the whole activity. However, in reality when this event will take place, when this event will happen, he may not take minimum 6 days or maximum 18 days. These are the extreme possibilities which may be very rare in the real life situation. In real life situation, you may end up taking somewhere near about 10 to 12 days. Let us say 10 days. This 10 days shall be called as the most likely time. Ye aapka most likely time kehlaega. This will be your pessimistic time and this will be your optimistic time. By rule, optimistic time is denoted by A. Pessimistic time is denoted by B. And most likely time is denoted by M. So these are the three different time estimates A, B and M. Now next thing we need to understand under PERT is that how do we calculate the expected time for each activity. Earlier under CPM we had only one time that was known with certainty. But under PERT we might be conducting an activity for the first time or maybe the project is happening for the first time in the life cycle of the company. In such cases they will always give you three different time estimates as I discussed earlier. The question that remains unanswered is now what value I should take while deciding the expected time of the activity. So there they have used the historical method or the statistical method where they have simply carried out a study and they had found out that out of every six times a observer will observe 
that the optimistic time happens one time pessimistic time also happen one time whereas four out of six times chances are that we will have the most likely time and therefore based on this numbers based on the past observations mathematicians have derived a formula to calculate the expected time this is nothing but the weighted average of the overall weights that i have taken in the calculation it will be 1 into a 4 into m plus 1 into b divided by 1 plus 1 plus 4 that is 6 so that will help us to get one single time called as the expected time then because there is an estimate and now estimates may go wrong i may go wrong in estimating the time for a particular activity and since there is uncertainty there is no surety that the project will be done in that particular time limit for this we calculate something called as the variance variance indicates to what extent your actual values may differ from the expected values and this can be calculated by using the formula b minus a upon 6 the whole square the difference between extreme values is taken as the variance or the deviation and based on that we calculate something called as standard deviation we need to understand this whole concept with an example or with a illustration then only we will get the things clear now before jumping to the example let's talk about how can you differentiate between cpm and pert so how will you differentiate cpm and pert now cpm was purely based on activities with certainty of the time whereas in pert our activities time are estimated time based on the probabilities CPM is something that will be very uh, easy and very simple to implement in case of existing projects whereas PERT may be required to be adopted at the initial stage for the new project which have been done for the first time never been encountered in the life cycle of the company Now under PERT we can analyze the numbers with statistics but then that can be done in case of CPM because we can't adopt or we can't put up the normal distribution table in case of CPM. So this can be some of the possible differences between CPM and PERT. Now I'll discuss a problem based on these time estimates. How to calculate the expected time or the mean time and the variance and then we'll proceed further. So this is a problem where we have near about 5 activities, we are given the activities with nodes, we are not given the alphabets for the activities and we are given the 3 time estimates, optimistic, most likely and pessimistic time estimates. Based on that we need to calculate the expected completion time and we can calculate the variance of each and every activity.
So we are done with the table. We are now solving the problem. We have got three time estimates. Most likely optimistic and pessimistic. I optimistic ko a likunga. Dusra hai most likely usko m likhenge. Aur tisra hai apka pessimistic. Yeh jayega apka b. I will use the formula to find out the expected time is equal to a plus 4m plus b. So expected time equals to a plus 4m plus b upon 6. So the first case will be, I will put the numbers first 2, 5, 8, 3, 4 and a half and 6. 2, 4, 7, 8, 12, 16, 2, 5 and 9. I will calculate the expected time. I got the formula for that a plus 4m plus b. So this will be 5 plus 5 into 4, 20 plus 10, 30 divided by 6. That comes to 5. Second case it will be 4.5 into 4 it will be 18. 18 plus 9 will be 27 divided by 4. So this comes to 4.5. Next is 6.25. Next is last one will be 5.17. Round up. So we calculate the expected time, we will calculate now the variance, variance of all the activities, it will be the formula will be variance equals to b minus a upon 6 the whole square. So in the first case it will be 8 minus 2 upon 6 the whole square that will be 1, 6 minus 3 that is 3 upon 6 the whole square 0.25. The third case it will be 7 minus 2, 5 upon 6 the whole square. The fourth case it will be 16 minus 8, 8 divided by 6 into whole square. And last one will be, I'll just note down. You need to find out the expected time variance that we have done and standard deviation of the critical path. Do we know the critical path? No. So first we need to draw the diagram. Based on the diagram we will get the critical path. For critical path we should know the duration of each and alternate routes through the project and therefore we need to draw the network diagram. So let's first draw the network diagram now. This is my original question. 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4 and 4, 2, 5. I'll just note down these things here. 1, 2, 2, 1, 2, 3, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4 and 4, 2, 5. These are the five activities. Now we need to draw the network diagram. So first you'll draw 1, 2, 2. Then 1, 2, 3, then 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, and 4, 2, 5. We will note down the duration of these activities. As per the original table, we have the duration. We will take the expected time, it is 5, 4.5, 5, 6.25, 5, 12 and 5.17. 5, 4.5, 5, 6.25, 5, 12 and 5.17. So I will just note down this duration. 5, 4.5. 6.25 12 
and 5.17. Now we will find the alternate routes to determine the critical path. My first route will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So duration will be 5 plus 6.25 plus 12 plus 5.17. That comes to 28.42 and my second route will be 1345. So for 1345 it will be 4.5 plus 12 plus 5.17 which is 21.67. Now looking at the duration of both the routes, there are only two routes available. The first route has a higher duration. So this will be called as the critical path. So 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4 and 4, 2, 5. 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4 and 4, 2, 5. These four will be critical activities. So I will say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is the critical path next critical activities will be 1 2 2 2 2 3 3 2 4 and 4 2 5 my project completion time will be 28.42 days and if they ask me to calculate the critical path standard deviation then how to calculate the standard deviation of critical path we simply add the variance of all the critical activities and get the square root to find out the standard deviation of critical path. The formula will be square root of summation or the total of variance of the critical path. So standard division of critical path equals to square root of sum total of variance of critical activities that will be called as the standard deviation in the present case except one two three all four are critical so let's add their variance so we have the variance of 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4 and 4, 2, 5 which is 1.69, 1 1.77 1 and 1.36 1 plus 0.69 plus 1.77 plus 1.36 which comes to 4.82 and the square root will be 2.195 which can be taken as 2.20 so therefore the square root of variance cut total is 2.20 which will be called as the standard deviation of the critical path and that will be the standard deviation of the project so that's it for the day thanks for watching this video do subscribe to our channel ikida